Hi, I'm Shay Brasvi from the Technology and Delivery Management team here at Symbian Foundation. Um, a number of people have been asking about Agile and how we actually use it within the Foundation, so I'm here to give you a quick overview. Agile is an umbrella term for a collection of methodologies, um, including things like extreme programming and Scrum. Within the Symbian Foundation, we use the Scrum framework um, for our iterative process. Scrum gets its name from uh, the rugby term, which is basically a collection of people trying to move forward towards a common goal, handling a ball, uh, trying to achieve that try. Uh, in the same way, uh, we have a cross-functional team within the Symbian Foundation that is able to work on any task within uh, that particular sprint uh, towards the common sprint goal. Well, sprint is just a two-week iteration um, that where we take the requirements that have been defined by the product owner and we commit to delivering that uh, at the end of that two-week iteration. So we use Scrum because it's a very flexible way to work with uh, emerging requirements when the solution or the requirements are not uh, yet concrete and they're still evolving. Um, it allows us to be flexible but in a very structured way. Um, it also aligns itself very well to the way that uh, engineers naturally work. So they'll develop something and then present it to uh, their peers and, uh, and customers and allow them to look at it as a preview before maybe that's the final solution. Um, comparing that to something like the waterfall model, where an engineer would perhaps develop and then present a solution at the end of a rather long period of time, uh, the, the customer may then see that for the first time after a very long period and they decide that that's not actually what they wanted. Um, and so working incrementally in the way that Scrum provides um, allows us to give previews to the customers so that they can change focus or change requirements uh, as we go and hopefully build a better product. So within Scrum, you've got three key roles. You've got the Scrum Master, the Product Owner and the Team. The Scrum Master is a facilitator of the process and should keep the whole process flowing. Uh, should be there to unblock any issues and basically prevent the team from being distracted by any external influences and anything that might prevent the team from achieving that sprint goal. Uh, next up, you've got the product owner who basically represents the customer and is there to understand customer requirements and to provide tasks and stories to go on the product backlog. Finally, you've got the team who should be a self-organizing and cross-functional bunch of individuals uh, capable of picking up and executing any task on the task board. So we have a series of meetings, we have a sprint planning meeting, we have data stand-ups and we have a demo meeting at the end. Sprint planning is arguably the most important meeting in Scrum and consists of the product owner identifying the requirements and what needs to be achieved for the duration of that sprint. After that's been delivered, each of the Scrum teams will then break out into individual rooms and proceed to start planning and breaking down the stories into individual tasks. The, uh, the complexity of the stories is identified through a mechanism called planning poker. So what will happen to each individual engineer after we've discussed what we think should be uh, required for the story for each of the individual tasks, each individual engineer will hold up a card which has either small, medium, large or extra large on it. If the majority of engineers signal a small complexity story but one engineer signifies extra large, then clearly there's a misunderstanding between the engineers. Um, what will then happen is the, the team will then continue to discuss and then they will re-vote. Uh, when they re-vote, if everyone agrees, for example, with a medium, then it's been agreed and we can be assured that the, the team has a better understanding of the complexity of the story. The story is then marked as a medium and then placed on the task board. A good planning session with everything well understood usually leads to a much smoother execution. The execution of the sprint is monitored through daily stand-up meetings where the team gathers every morning for 15 minutes around the task board. Three questions that usually crop up during that process, uh, during that meeting, are what have you achieved since yesterday, what are you planning on doing today, and are there any blocking issues? Uh, if there are any blocking issues, then it's usually the role of the Scrum Master to take that issue to one side and to try and resolve it, thereby preventing anything from stopping that story from being completed. So we use a pin board and cards, as it's a highly effective and visible way of showing the status of the sprint. Anyone walking around the office can see just how far along in the sprint we are. Um, it's also very effective for allocating tasks and completing tasks simply by engineers picking up cards from the left hand side, putting them into the middle, putting their initials against it, and when the task is completed, moving it to the right and ticking it. 
and we find it a lot easier than standing around and pointing at a computer screen. So the final meeting that we have is a demo meeting, and that's an opportunity for the team to be able to showcase what they've achieved for the duration of that sprint. It's also a great opportunity for any stakeholders to provide any early feedback, which is essential for an iterative development process and essential in Scrum. So that's how we use Scrum in the Symbian Foundation. It works effectively for us and allows us to deliver an evolving software platform and associated tools incrementally. Well, I hope you found that useful, and thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.